bless your name. Indeed, we are grateful that you are there for us. We are grateful that we are seeing another new day, a day that you have made that we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, receive our thanks for this in the name of Jesus. Thank you from the beginning of the service today, from the prayer session to the Sunday school, the worship, the giving, the testimonies, and even for this moment that we're about to share your word briefly, Father, all the glory and adoration will return to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for teaching us your word on your mind concerning our healing. Thank you for making us to know that even when we exercise our faith, we must be doer of your word. We ask even this morning, let your Holy Spirit continue to remind us of these teachings and words when we need to apply them in the name of Jesus. I am particularly grateful unto you, O God, for your loving kindness and mercy for your church. Father, take all the praises in Jesus' mighty name. And as I share with your children even now, Father, please let your Holy Spirit speak to our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Again, I bless God for your life, and I bless God for my life. I bless God that we are alive and well to be part of the service today. What a great blessing for us to be able to gather to worship God, even to be able to say thank you. And this morning, I'll be sharing with us what I thank, titled, Thank God for Love. Thank God for Love. I know somebody might be wondering, thanking God for love? Yes. I want you to imagine, if we do not have love as part of our life, imagine how our world would be. It will have been 100% hatred. But in spite of that, God still made that provision for love for us. And I want you to begin to look at the word love this morning as something concrete, something tangible. I'm not talking of just saying, I'm talking of you living it, doing it. And we go to the scripture, you will see that God loves you, God loves me, and we need to continue to thank him for that love that he's having for us. Please turn your Bible with me to Psalm 107, and I'm going to read the first three verses, Psalm 111, I mean seven. We are reading the first three verses. Here David said, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the hands of the foe. Those he gathered from the lands from east and west, from north and south. Praise the Lord. He said, give thanks to God for his love. And I am grateful that as a church that we are doing. He said, let the redeemed, those who have been bought by the precious blood of Jesus, tell their story, tell their testimony, which we have done. We give God the praise for all of those testimonies. When I say thank God for love, like I said at start, that one of some of us might be wondering, love, is it worth thanking God for? I say yes. Because I hear many things that people thank God for. At times, you laugh within yourself or you are asking, why is that so important to them? I'm sure many of us will have had people say, oh, I thank God, it is Friday. Or maybe you have even said it. Then you ask, what is so spectacular about that? 
that people can come to terms with that because they know at least there'll be a respite, there'll be a break from the nine to five grueling. If people can have that mind to say, thank God it's Friday, then I am saying to us, even as children of the living God, we must learn to thank God for love. What love are we talking about? Is love that he has shown us. Is love that he has shown us. I know we are all familiar with our Bible. We know what God is talking to us through Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 about love. But when you go to the last verse of that passage, 1 Corinthians 13, I want us to read the last verse of it so that you get the import of what I'm trying to bring to us this morning. 1 Corinthians 13, last verse. Sorry, I'm trying to get it here. If you read the whole of the chapter, you will see all that Paul has been talking about there. He has talked about, yeah, I can pray, I can prophesy, I can sing, make melodies, do all of those spiritual exercises. But he ended up saying in verse 13, of Corinthians 13, he said, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. But the greatest of these is love. Why was Paul so emphatical about that? Because Paul has come to understand that it was the love of God that preserved his life to be able to say, he is a servant of God. He is a child of God. Have you ever take time to say, God, I thank you for your love for me that you can even call me your child? Have you ever taken the time to say, God, I thank you for your love for me, for saving me? We need to be able to do this, children of the living God. Because when you understand this and you do it, that makes us to begin to, com to comprehend, to begin to appreciate that depth of love. That gives us the, 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 the understanding to know that that you say you are a Christian is not something you take for levity. It's not, take, it's not something you take for granted because this is coming through the heart of God even by sacrificing his only son for you to have that love. But unfortunately, many take this to be, oh, it's just one of those things. Yes, if you have given your life to God, fine. But beyond that one, you must leave it out. And for those of us that were part of the Sunday school this morning, you will see that the emphasis on the healing that we have been given through the love of God is what we must leave out. It's what we must do. There are things we must do to show that truly we are thanking God for loving us. If you hear it, if you hear the word day in, day out, and you don't do it, you are not showing that you truly love God. Again, I want us to go to Epistle of John in 1 John 4, and we're going to read verses 7 to 12. Epistle of John, 1 John and we are reading from verses 7 to 12. I read here, 1 John 4, 7 to 12. He said, dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love amongst us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. 
not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is the heart of John. On the need for us to appreciate God for his love for us and the need for us to continue to thank God for this love. It is out of this love that he forgives us of all sins. It is out of this love that he sent his precious son to die for you and for me. It takes somebody who truly cares about you to make a sacrifice for you. And this is why he's still encouraging us, even as dear children of God. Not only should we thank God for the love he's having for us, you should thank even people that God has put in your life that loves you. Thank God for them. Thank God for them. And I'm bringing this to us, church of God. Wherever you may be on the globe, thank God for people that God has put in your life that loves you. Could be your parents, your pastors, your friends, your colleagues at work the people of God in the church that loves you, you must continue to thank God for them. And this is why I say we need to be able to see love as something concrete. And that's why if you, in, in that First Corinthians 13, you will see that love is being looked at as a noun, something of a person, something concrete, something we should always appreciate. Yes, you might say, oh, he doesn't do this for me. She doesn't do that for me. But the fact that that individual is still in your life, you should thank God for it. Many a times I look at my wife, I say, oh, I thank you for loving me. Say, what do you mean? That's what I should do. What if you choose not to do it? What? Because there are people that choose not to do it, even though they know that's what they should do. But I say, thank you for loving me for even being able to cope with my nuances because not all of the time I'm that very good as a person. And I want to believe maybe some, there's someone like me like that too. But even in that, she still shows me love. So I always say thank you. Are you there? You are hearing me this morning? Maybe you think your husband is not showing you enough of love. The father he is still in your life. Thank God for that. And of course, continue to pray for him. And it could be your wife as well. Thank God for her and continue to pray for her. Let us know how to do this. Because we were told in the last scripture that we read in the Epistle of John chapter 4, if you can't even do this to the person you are seeing, I am wondering if you'll be able to do this to God that you have not seen. That was what he was saying there. He stayed there for friends. Since God is God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. And if we can love one another, then we'll be able to love God. But if you cannot love the person you are seeing now, even though I am encouraging us to thank God for love, I'm sure it will stand as a story in your ears. But I pray that the Holy Spirit will give you a greater understanding. Thank God for love. Thank God for sending Jesus Christ as the savior of the world. Like I said, if, 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 if God has not done that, how, I can't even imagine how terrible and how chaotic this our world will have been even now. In spite of this, we still know the chaotic situation we find ourselves in the world. And this is bringing me to a point to an instruction that I would like to pass this morning, particularly to men. Men in the church, can you wave to God? If you are there, you are a man. Just wave to God. God bless you, sir. I know some of us, we don't like showing our faces. That's fine. 
But then if you cannot show your face now, good. Maybe at the feet of Jesus, we will see your face. An instruction to us, men. I want you to show that love in concrete terms to your wife. I say it again. Men, hear me and hear me clearly. It's an instruction. I want you to show it in concrete terms. Love to your wife. I hope somebody will not be saying, why is pastor not saying the, Lord, the wife should show it to their husband? I want it first because that is instruction to us. He said, husband loves your wife. Even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. I want us to be the one that will set the pace. That even we are celebrating the love of God this month as Christmas. Even the world knows it. Even some don't believe it, but they know it. But for us that knows it and believe it, I want us to show it. Let's start with our own wife. Do something spectacular. Do something that she will live to remember, to say, oh, based on the instruction of pastor, I am doing this and see what God will do in your life, my brothers. And I am telling you, God will move beyond your imagination. Whatever God is laying in your heart, please do it. May not cost you so much, may cost you so much, but even if it is costing you so much, know that, that what God did for you, sacrificing his only son, is even more expensive than whatever you think it will cost you. And if you can do this, hey, favor of God is waiting for you, is waiting for me. And that we will receive in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let us thank God for love. Like I said, if not, if that had not been there, I don't know how our world would have even looked like. Maybe it would be more terrible than what we have now. It is by his love we are preserved. It is by his love we have not been consumed. And that is expressly stated in the scriptures. For his love, for his love, for his mercy, for his love. And to me, this is so great. Um, and I'm passing it to us as a church. Let's take it to be that. And let's extend it to one another. Even if you want to take it further, express it to brethren. They say, let the redeemed, in that Psalm 107, let the redeemed of the Lord those that have been bought by their precious blood. Let us extend that love one to another. And I want to thank everyone in Jesus Palace for what we are doing and for what we are here to do. We need to show it more. We need to display it more. Many of us, we are doing it, but we still need to do more of this. This is where people will know that we are the children of God. As a child, we have been extending that love to those that we do not know they are not even members of Jesus Palace. That's fine. That's not important. I mean, that is good if they are, but that is not even the most important. The most important thing is we want to show them that love that God has shown to us. I bless God for our brother. He was sharing in his testimony. He had the ticket. I thank God that God stepped in to pay that for him. But then he was doing it to show love for God by going to do that, but for a mistake of forgetfulness, that came. But God still stood for him. So even in the course of you expressing this love to others, there are things you may suffer. Please count it all for joy. Because the love God himself has shown to us is way more, more than those inconveniences, more than those losses. You can imagine God was considering the loss of his own son. I won't be able to stand before you now. You won't even be able, you won't even be here to hear me. But God did not consider all of that. And that is why I'm encouraging us, even as we go in the course of the week, please continue to thank God for his love for you, for your family, for his church, for the world, even as we see it today. God bless you, sir. God bless you.
Let's bow down our heads to pray. I want you to begin to thank God. Let's thank him. Thy Father will thank you. I thank you for your love for me. I thank you that you do not withhold it like a typical woman would do. I thank you because out of that abundance of your love, you sent your only son to die that gruesome death on the cross for me, that I may become your own. Father, I thank you. And above all, I thank you that you even now put people in my life to encourage me, to love me, to show me love too. I say thank you. I thank you, O oh God, even for the love amongst brethren in your church, Jesus Palace. Yes, we continue to work on ourselves to love more. Thank you for this. We thank you, O oh God, for your love over the children you have given unto us. Thank you that many of them, they still sit down to hear your word, to learn at your feet, even to do your will. We are grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord Jesus. Above all, thank you for giving us your word to guide us, to lead us, to preserve our soul. We are grateful. Father, receive our praises in Jesus' name. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Thank you, church.